Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily, and I have laryngitis today. Kids back to school, got everyone sick at home, so I got a little bit of laryngitis, so you'll have to bear with me today. We're going to look at some um, cool snakes in the collection, and we're going to take a look at my first um, clutch that actually hatched in 2021, and that's a carpet python clutch. So we'll, we'll take a look at that, and we're going to see some, some cool stuff that I, I like in my collection. We've been doing that the last couple times. I know people like to see some cool stuff. So we'll take a look and see what's uh, what I'm growing up and what could be potentially breeding this year or possibly in the future. And we'll look at this clutch and then hopefully in the next couple of days, we're gonna start seeing a lot more eggs being laid on the ground. And in the coming, I think next week is when the ball pythons start to hatch. So then we're gonna start seeing some more stuff. So we're getting into the real midst of the breeding season where we're getting laying eggs, uh, we're getting uh, hatching going on. We're going to get some boa litters hopefully soon that actually are viable. <laughs> so far we have to have two litters of slugs. Not good. Uh, but you got to take the good with the bad and you know it's it sucks. There's nothing worse when you come in and see a boa litter and they're all just slugs or dead or something like that. I mean it happens. It happens to all, all boa breeders out there but you know I've gotten two in a row already and you know what it's, it's early in the season. Usually the slugs come earlier. I find that if they're going to deliver slugs they don't go the full hundred days and it's just it is what it is. The only good thing is that it seems like the females recover faster when they have slugs in them as opposed to when they have actual live babies that come out. So there is a possibility that the females could go next year again. So keep fingers crossed because some of those females were really good ones. All right, let's take a look and see what we got. Peacocks on the pool cage. Oh, there they go. Running away. Good job, guys. This is this is the only friendly one. This this little uh, yeah, hide one. Yeah, he, he he wants to come in and play. This guy. The other guys are like a little more wild. Come in then. Logan, are you gonna are you gonna pet him? No. <laughs> well, I won't. Guys, sit on the ground. I think he wants food. That's why. Um, what are we getting food? This guy's got to be a pied, I'm telling you. Hold the door for me. Okay. That has got to be some kind of like asanthic or something like that because that he's got almost no green in him. He's not going to eat that, Logan. He might. Go get him. Okay. He might. This is he's giving him two. Oh, he's just a bite out of it. He wants like bread or something like that. That's what I'm go. No, you're not getting any bread. Let's go. Hungry. You got to go to school, guys. This is your little natural history lesson before we leave for school. All right, let's go, guys. Let's let the peacock uh, be a peacock. I like peacock. You do. Yeah, you do. It's pretty cool. Oh, look at that over there, blue thing. Yeah, we used to have a lot of big. Uh, we had a really white peacock, but never, no one this tame actually. Oh, Logan, come on. We got to go to school. All right, just feed him real quick. Let's go. You left the door wide open, so. All right, all right. That's our that's our little uh, feed the wild animals. Now we'll never get rid of them. <laughs> he likes bread. He loves the bread. Yeah. We should feed him every day. No, nah, we don't need to feed him every day. We we should feed him every day. How about that? How about we take care of him? He's a wild bird that has. Tremendous health. Now we're going to feed him white bread. He's going to, he'll probably die of heart disease. How do we take care of him? We don't need to, he, he's doing a fine job by himself, guys. All right, let's go. Come on. Wait, 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 so wait. Off to school, as my mother used to always say. What? School tomorrow. School today. Let's go. Carpet python. That was the only baby that survived from my zebra albino to zebra albino breeding. She's gone through or going through that ontogenetic color change now, and I'm seeing some amazing, amazing reds in her. And I'm assuming she's um, an albino, obviously. <laughs> I don't know. If they, I don't think she's a zebra. I don't know. I thought she was zebra when she was born, but I don't know. I guess she is zebra. I don't know. She doesn't have that like fine detail. I really thought she was zebra. I, maybe you, uh, carpet experts out there can tell me. I, I could, would have sworn she was a zebra when she was born. But 
she's got some amazing colors. This is one of my best colored albinos I've produced. And because she's the only one in the clutch, I gotta keep her, of course, but. <laughs> she's really, um, really cool looking. This is not from my, um, my snow, moon glow carpet projects. It was supposed to be for my, I was trying to create a super zebra albino. I don't know how viable they are, but I only got one egg from the first, you know, clutch that they produced. And then the male and female independently died like six months apart. One had a tumor and then one just, I don't know what happened. I don't know if the female had something. I don't know what was wrong. I, I never got a diagnosis on it, but this was the baby, the one that survived and she eats great and she's really pretty. So, just thought I'd show her off. There's a lot of people might want to see her. I always, if I get a one egg clutch, it's really hard for me to get rid of the uh, babies because I almost think it's like a, it's like someone's giving me a message or a gift. So I, I figure I better keep it. <laughs> We're gonna feed the anaconda. I'm, so by the way, sorry I got laryngitis. Um, this anaconda will not eat anything live. It will only eat frozen thought. And I guess I would, I should be happy that that's the case. Because she was only eating birds at first. Chicken, like uh, chicks she was eating. Now I got her eating rodents, but she only eat frozen thought. Which is not the worst thing. I'd rather eat frozen thought than live. So we're going to let her eat that. And uh, she likes to take her time and not be bothered. As she's getting older, she's really got a nice little pattern going. Those circles are really nice. They're clean. She's got a very clean pattern. Hopefully, I'll be able to keep this girl for educational purposes. I'm trying to apply for an educational permit here for a few of my berms and a couple of the anacondas. Obviously, I won't be able to breed them, but at least if I can keep them just for pets and, like I say, education, that would be awesome. Let's let her eat her meal in peace. All right, I haven't shown you this beauty in a while. This is my Coral Glow. I think it's a pastel. Pastel Coral Glow Sugar. It's all that white, I love sugar. And this is also Mandarin. So Coral Glow Mandarin Sugar, possible pastel in there. And she's obviously got some kind of paradoxing going on. That's what that, you see that black, black splotches right there. Um, I'm hoping she'll breed this year. She's she's still on the smaller side. She's gonna be, she was a really crappy eater. Um, she started out like a banshee, and then she kind of calmed down. I was really, really hoping to get this girl to go. Um, I bred her back to her father, which was a mandarin, to try to produce the super mandarin coral glow sugar. Let's we'll see. She might go later this year. Gorgeous, gorgeous snake. Those whites in there are absolutely amazing. And the, and the oranges from the mandarin are sensationalistic. So, these were all purples too, and she's born. They're still purples, they're just light, really light purples. You know? And I love, the, I love the paradoxing along the dorsal side too. That's really cool. So, we'll see if she goes a little later this season. Here's a goral. Here's a gorgeous super fire. It's also head clown. It has a lot of other possible hidden stuff in it. Possible high intensity orange dream and some other goodies that I don't even know if they'll be in there. I'm not gonna even reveal it at this point. I held her back because obviously she's got so much good stuff in her that I was afraid. I, I actually sold her sister, but I held her back because I said, you know what? This is about the cleanest super fire I've ever seen in ball pythons. Usually they have dirty, like yellow one along their dorsal side. She is super clean, which would, which would basically tip me off to the fact that she probably has, you know, orange dream there. Possibly high intensity orange dream. So, you know, when we breed her out, we'll breed her in a really nice male and hopefully get some of those oranges to come out. Obviously everything she throws will be fire. 50% if she's bred to a visual clown will be clown, so sometimes you gotta hold back these powerhouses. Plus, who the hell doesn't want a nice, beautiful, gorgeous white snake with black eyes? 
these black eyed leucistics are amazing. And you, you gotta have a couple in your in your collection, right? I mean, 10, 15 years ago, this snake would have been priceless, right? She is just super, super, super clean, super white. She's loving being outside in the grass. She's looking at the birds. She's seeing the horses over there in the distance. So, she's feeling her, sowing her wild oats out here, yeah. So we'll let her explore a little bit and check out what else we got going on. So I was really waiting to show you this clutch because um, this is my first clutch that hatched out this year. This is um, a carpet python clutch. I bred a caramel dub, uh, double head moon glow to a caramel double head moon glow. The moon glow in carpets would be your caramel albino azanthic. The albino is recessive azanthic, azan is recessive azanthic being lack of yellow, albino lack of black, and then caramel kind of lightens everything up. So. The idea is the super caramel albino azanthic is what we call the full moon or full moon glow. Bow, uh, bow. <laughs> Carpet python. A caramel albino azanthic would be just a regular moon glow. I think I produced one this past year. This was the first shot I had at the, at the full moon because I was breeding caramel double head to caramel double head. So this was all that seems to have survived. I have about six eggs still in the incubator. They, there's some babies in them, but they don't look very good. And it's funny, weird how I didn't get any albinos whatsoever. I don't know why, but just, I guess, piss poor luck. <laughs> this is a, a nice one. This is an actual um, caramel, excuse me, a, a xanthic right here. You see the silver eye. I got a bunch of caramels, as you can see. I think I got a, um, a super caramel here. That would be 66% head double, head moon glow. I don't know. It's hard to tell. I know until you breed them out, until they go through their color change. Some of these caramels are really light for right out of the egg. This one right here. Look at this one. This one could be potentially a super caramel. It's a really light looking head pattern. Um, I guess it could also be a, uh, a xanthic caramel, which would be a ghost. But there's a lot of like oranges oranges in here so we got a lot of caramel stuff we did get some actually there's another azanthic right there see those silver eyes so we got we got two visual azanthics that i can see everything else looks like it has caramel in it we might have a super caramel it's some one of these no albinos whatsoever so we didn't hit any moon glows or snows or anything like that in this but we might have hit some ghosts i guess we have to really see how these things you know turn out but it wasn't too bad for, for this is only the, the the mama's first time clutch and a lot of times at least in my experience the carpets when they go their first time they really don't have great fertility so i was happy to actually get anything to be honest with you and uh she'll go pro hopefully again next year and have a better outcome obviously the idea is to have as many fertile eggs as possible so that we have a better chance of hitting the moon glow the idea that i can hit it again next year is exciting you know i'm not worried i'm not in a rush um you know, as many times as I got to do it, I'll do it. You know, I'm producing some really cool stuff in the, in the process and some stuff that's, you know, 66 percenters and some visual stuff. And so people can at least get involved in the project and try to, you know, produce their own. And that's, uh, I want to spread this project. This one's a really nice, these asanthics are really nice. These two, this one right here and this one, this one is really light. I'm really wondering if it is a ghost, a caramel asanthic. I'm not sure though. It doesn't look that light. We'll have to wait till these like things are probably a year old before we really know for sure. <clears throat> and then the only way to really know for sure would be to breed them out. So this is the first clutch of the, in my collection for 2021. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. Um, hopefully you enjoyed some of the snakes we took a look at and hopefully you also enjoyed looking at my carpet python clutch. We didn't hit any moon glows, we didn't hit any snows. As a matter of fact, we didn't even hit an albino, but we got some really cool azanthics in there. Possible ghosts, ghosts being the caramel azanthic combination. Um, and we definitely hit some cool caramels. So I really haven't really produced a lot of caramels. I did produce some in 2020, but these look like they could even potentially be some super caramels in there as well. So uh, exciting. Whenever I produce stuff I've never produced, I, I get excited about it. And so 
I try to look at the positive. I still actually have six eggs from that clutch in the incubator. Some of them are smelly eggs. Some of them have some, it looks like they have some, some live babies in them because I've slid them open. I don't know if they're alive or not. We'll find, I'm gonna give another like couple days. If no one crawls out, I'll cut the eggs a little bit more and see. I have a feeling there's a lot of, there's a bunch of dead, dead ones in there. But that's the way it goes. Some, you know, first clutches sometimes not you know, the, I did notice when this female laid the clutch, some of them were outside of the, uh, of the bundle, so to speak. The ones that were in the bundle seemed to mostly have hatched. So it's weird how these females know which ones are, are fertile and which ones are not. I wonder if they can smell it or something like that. It's just, it is pretty amazing in that sense. All right, guys, I hope you're having a great day. You know what to do. Hit that subscribe button, turn on your notifications, hit the like button. I'll see you back tomorrow morning.